NBA, Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Luka Doncic had a monster, monster game, a 30-point triple-double in the first three quarters of the game in the Dallas Mavericks' 128-110 to win over the Lakers. Now, granted, I understand LeBron, AD, they weren't playing, but it doesn't negate the fact that he was productive through the first three quarters, 34 points, 12 rebounds, 12 assists for Luka Doncic. The Mavericks are currently fourth in the Western Conference. On the season, Doncic is averaging 28 points, nine rebounds, eight and a half assists on the year, just doing Luka Doncic stuff. He deserves to make my Malkins moments. Another player in the NBA, Paul George, made his return after a three-month absence due to a elbow surgery. He was repairing or rehabbing a torn ulnar collateral ligament in his right elbow, underwent surgery on December 22nd. He's been gone since December 22nd, and yet he comes back, drops in 34 points on 10 for 20 shooting in the win over the Utah Jazz last night. It capped a 25-point comeback against the Jazz. Now, obviously, we all remember how the last time these two teams faced off in the postseason at Crypto.com Arena at the time it was Staples Center, how the Clippers rallied from down 20, 22 points at the half in Game 6. They actually ended up trailing by 25 after Donovan Mitchell hit a three to start the third quarter. And from that point on, they went on to win the second half, 81-44, to 44, in that postseason game in Game 6 to pull away and win by 12, like 131-119. to 119. So that was the lasting image and memory that I had when he came back he was six for nine from three was Paul George with four steals. And apparently his 34 points were the most ever by a player who had missed their team's previous 40 plus games within one season, according to a lot of sports bureau research. And George, Paul George now has thir- has more 30 point games this season. He's got seven despite missing the last 40 games in three months. He's got seven 30 point games this season. He's got more than the rest of the Clippers team Combined, the Clippers team has six players that have, or at least six performances with a 30 point game. He already has seven on the year despite missing the last three months. So, big, big shout out to him and the Clippers, the job Ty Lue's been doing with them this year. I know Ty Lue's not going to garner much consideration for coach of the year, but I think the way he's been able to guide the Clippers this year shows his coaching prowess. He's been working with Really, I mean, no stars at all for the majority of the season, and he still has them in the position that they are firmly entrenched in the eighth spot. So shout out to him and Paul George. And finally, shout out to the UConn Huskies, the women's basketball program. What a game that was against number one seed NC State a couple days ago in the Elite Eight. The two seed UConn and the Huskies advancing to their 14th consecutive final four under Gino Ariema. It's his 22nd overall final four appearance Huskies end up winning in double overtime 91 to 87 it's the first time in in women's NCAA tournament history that there's been a double overtime game in the elite eight or farther in the history of the sport which is unbelievable it speaks to just how fantastic of a game it was and and let me let me give a, a big shout out not only to that program but also Paige Beckers 27 points, 10 for 15 shooting from the from the floor. She's been garnering all kinds of uh, of praise as she should be and drawing comparisons to Diana Taurasi. Sue Bird complimented her, paying her that ultimate compliment, drawing the comparison to Diana Taurasi. And Beckers has been fantastic, the reigning national player of the year as a freshman. Now she's a sophomore. She missed substantial time due to an injury just kind of is still working her way back into peak performance. And they needed her in that game because NC State, the Wolfpack, they're a really well-coached team. That's been a really good team all year. They ended up going like 30. They had they had 30-plus wins, 32-4, and four, I believe, was their record. The other UConn freshman, uh, a, a Z Food, or Z Fud, apart, uh, apologies if I mispronounced the last name, poured in 19 points. But here's the thing, the game had 13 uh, ties and and nine lead changes or pardon flip it 13 lead changes nine ties so 
there, there was all kinds of history at stake for both of these sides. The Wolfpack were trying to advance to their first ever Final Four since 1998. Obviously, the Huskies advanced into their 14th consecutive. And again, credit Gino Ariema. Obviously, more credit goes to the players, but especially to the coaching staff to be able to constantly, year in and year out, produce the ultimate winners. We, we, we always think that sports should be expected at the college level when you're able to, to get all the, all the top recruits. But the reality is to actually execute it in that big tournament and to have players, to recruit the types of players that have the mental makeup and the mental for, fortitude to be able to deliver in the clutch like that, it, it's impressive. But again, yeah, shout out to Paige Beckers. Shout out to the entire UConn Huskies women's team. And really also NC State for delivering an all-time great game, let alone basketball game, let alone men's, women's, doesn't matter. Double overtime, you had clutch baskets, clutch performances from both sides. It was absolutely fantastic to watch. Wanted to give them a major shout-out on Morning Joe. So that'll do it for us. Thank you so much for joining me right here on Morning Joe every single Monday and Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 11 Central, and 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube page, Morning Joe, J-O, with Jonah Malkin on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jonah underscore Malkin, or at Morning underscore Joe underscore. Follow me on Instagram, jmalk97, or on TikTok, at Jonah Malkin. Thank you so much, and as always, have a lovely rest of your morning.